in this video we are going to discuss about the seven step improvement process so what is a seven step improvement process and before that what are the prerequisites for seven step improvement process in continual service improvement the prerequisites would be define what you should measure define what you can measure gather the data process the data analyze the data present and use the information which is available after analyzing and also implement corrective actions so these are the seven step improvement processes in continual service improvement so before that what are the requisites or prerequisites we are looking for in continual service improvement the prerequisites for seven step improvement process are identifying and understanding your organization's strategy vision also goals for future and also distinguish between short term and long term activities so that you will be having a clear idea when you are following this seven step improvement process so proceeding the seven step improvement process the first step is define what you should measure so what you should measure you should define it very clearly here you can see by following following this process you can see about inputs and outputs what are the inputs available to us and what are the outputs we are expecting from the inputs coming to the inputs here vision and mission that means service level request and service level agreements etc will come under vision and mission coming to service catalog service catalog should be measured very clearly so that you can follow all the services which are available in the service catalog management legislative also governance requirements so you should have permissions and also accesses to the folders whatever you require based on the requirements so coming to business expectations so following this process what the business is expecting comes as a main or key role here so out of that inputs what are the outputs you get the outputs what we get is list of what you should measure so you get a list of details what you should measure in the next step so coming to the step 2 you can see define what you can measure so what you can measure the inputs are list of what you should measure as well as existing new processes or existing processes procedures work instructions so these are the inputs available to you in the second step existing or proposed tools their expertise and manual details also will be available in define what you can measure step past experience and reports so based on your past experience as well as based on your previous year reports also will be helpful for you in following this step and out of this step you will be getting list of what you can measure very clearly coming to the step 3 gather the data so in gather the data step what are the inputs you have the inputs are list of what you can measure answers to who whom and when that means you have a list of matrix to whom to me to whom to call or to, to whom to assist at, at particular times and all you should be measuring here so check the accuracy of data so you also analyze and check the accuracy of data here which will be having an input for you in the gathering of data data collection requirements and procedures so you have data collection requirements and procedures in the step 3 so that based on this the outputs what you get is collection of the data a bunch of collection of data what actually you gather the information and also updated capacity and availability plans which are based on this data analyzing and collection requirements tools to be used so based on what tools are available and what we can use also we get an out output in gathering the data and monitoring procedures so what are the monitoring procedures we have to implement to get the right information or analyzing the data so coming to the fourth step processing the data so after gathering the data the fourth step would be the processing data so in the inputs data what we get is data from previous step also will be available for us as an input in processing the data data processing requirements tools and formats frequency so after the data processing the requirements is available also the data which will be used on tools and also format of frequency or also is available in processing the data what are the outputs what after the inputs what we get updated capacity availability plans sorted we arrange data that means sorted data will be arranged as per the inputs what we get reports facts and figures also is available in a graphical presentation so after processing the data it is it comes the analyzing of the data so what what inputs you have in analyzing of the data the inputs are outputs from the processing of data data comparison with expectations questions like is this performance is really good bad or the target performance is achieved or not what are the outputs from this input analyze data will be available 
reports which help in the drawing conclusions or decision makings are also will be helpful in getting the output in the analyzing the data. So, after that the next step would be present and use the information. So, afterwards the input what we get from analyzing the data, the outputs from previous step that means from analyzing the data the output what we get is used as an input in present and use of the information. Also past presentations, so if any past presentations or past history is available those are also very helpful for the, the inputs in pre present and use the information output. What are the outputs we get in present and use of information? Presentation of information, conclusions and recommendations to businesses and also senior management and IT internal IT teams. So based on this the output what we get is very easy for the team to conclude on business decisions and also to take appropriate actions accordingly. So coming to the last point is implement corrective actions. So based on all the information in the six steps implement corrective actions the inputs what we take here is decisions by businesses based on the previous steps or the senior management or internal IT and also necessary authority approvals also we have to consider as an input in implement and corrective actions. Coming to output, after giving an out, out input we take the output as implemented corrective actions. So we implement corrective actions based on the seven process improvement steps and also improved results can be achieved by using these seven steps. In the next video we will be discussing about the metrics, roles and responsibilities in service continual improvement.